Hey, so do you want to create this amazing effect? So you came to the right place. Please stay tuned to the end of the video where the example is going to be explained. And don't forget to download our heap file and join our Discord where we are speaking about these topics every day. Okay, so first of all, let's create a geometry. And on this geometry, let's create a box. Let's grab the Y position, copy, and then paste this and divide it by two. Now, let's shrink it and make it longer. This is going to be our wooden plank or our concrete plank. It doesn't really matter. So let's create, to start with, the fracture. This is going to be really easy. Let's create an ISO offset. Now, scatter some points here. I'm going to scatter around 20 points. Let's unrelax this and let's create a copy to points. In this copy to points, we're going to plug this in here and create a randomized attribute. Um, plug the end and then use a direction or orientation. This will create different orientation on the normal and it will be just fine. Let's create a grid and go to the box. Copy the biggest size and paste it around here. You will see why. Basically, you got to multiply these values, both of them, by three. Just to make sure when we do the fracture, nothing goes wrong. So we got this. We can check the grid like so. Let's create more resolution. And now let's create a Boolean fracture. The Boolean fracture works like this. You can plug in what you want to shatter and you can plug in your grid. It will automatically create these kind of shatters. So far so good. We're going to append this and do the following. Well, as you can tell, we have a name that goes from 0 to 198. But we don't have a name. So we're going to create this like so. Let's plug in a connectivity node on primitives. Let's do a wrangle and on this wrangle just copy and paste this code. It's easy. The name it will be equal to the piece plus our primitive class. See, we're going to go to primitives and now we have piece. We can obviously change this to rock. For example, and now it's rock. So we also we don't need this in this tutorial, but it is always a good practice to save this as an S name original, just to have the recording of our object. So let's plug this in. Now you'll see the pieces actually match to our geometry. See, rock zero and rock zero divides in 198. So let's create just one thing, mountain sub. We can decrease the resolution. We don't need that much. So 1440 or 50 and 50. Go to the mountain, make it higher, and raise the height, the, the element size. Now our fractures will be better, as you can see. We can increase the point size or change the steel to look at different fractures. This is okay, I guess. And with Shift S, you can control how it looks on our network viewer. So now that we have this, we can assemble this. We can assemble this and create our packed geometry like so. We should create a wrangle. We will create a value called out equals zero. You will see why in a moment. This is really important, so don't forget about it. We also want to create our constraints. We're going to create them now. So in order to do this, create a connect actions in pieces, but don't forget to first unpack this. If you unpack this and you create adjacent points, you won't see anything unless you click on this point. Create a rest line just to be sure. And create a delete. The delete will be based on the range and the range will be every 10 by 11 or whatever number you want. They just want to have less uh, constraints so it works faster. We're going to create a wrangle and this wrangle will have the following code. It's nothing hard. It's 
any constraint type and we will have the glue but instead of glue we're going to place hard because I like hard more and let's grab a null and this will be the the out null the out uh, on sorry this will be the out rbd and we should have or we could create our dock network the dump network is going to be really simple we are going to just have the rigid or the rbd packed objects like so we're going to plug this in here we're going to choose we're going to choose the out rpd we're going to create a rigid body solver and we're going just to create some gravity and this should just work fine okay so instead of creating the gravity here we can do the same by creating a pop force here and applying minus 9.8 as you can see closely it's pretty much the same let's create a merge here and do a ground like this in here and you will see now it just doesn't fall it breaks but it doesn't fall i don't want to see this so let's enable this and we want to create our const constraint network with our hard constraint relationship and we're going to use our name of the node this is it with the middle mouse you can see our name we are going to place hard as we spelled above in subs and we're going to grab our out constraints so now we can see that we have everything plugged together i don't want the points and i can see it all here this is fine we're going to break them in a little bit so this is our basic setup and we should actually be or start creating our guided geometry setup so let's create a divide let's actually go here and enable triangulate or enable maximum edges click on brick polygons paste everywhere this value and uh, let's go for 0.2 i guess or 0.1 instead this should work just fine we're going to do a, a twist a twist like so our direction we want it to be on the negative axis so we're going to do the following and our size will be equal to the x axis our capital length so we can see that we have an issue here our box is like a little bit behind so we can match size here so instead of doing this we are going to just justify on the main axis or on the max axis instead and we can plug everything here and now we can see that the twist works just fine and we're going to animate this we're going to just do a bend the bend will go from 0 to around 90, frame 96 and it will bend like so i think this is fine this will work just fine and i think i want this to be a little bit longer this will be better okay so now that we have this we should use an iso offset and in first we need a time shift the time shifts will work for the next thing we're going to delete the channel and go to frame one we want this to be the rest position we don't need it to be so precise and we're going to scatter a couple of points 1000 will be okay let's not relax this and let's create a, a point deform node okay so in the first point we're going to deform the points we are going to use this as a rest point and we are going to use the following as our deforming simulation okay the reason why it didn't work is because i somehow deleted my bend modifier here so i am going to bend this a little bit more and lock the deformation so now we should see this deformation this works just fine we're going to do a trail because we want to compute our velocity on the points and we're going to rasterize attributes our rasterize attributes will work like so we're going to plug in the velocity and we can see this actually moving we can clamp and we can also increase the size so it bends a little bit more or not it depends so far so good we're going to place a null it's going to be out b and we need one more thing that will be uh this will be really easy polygon 
with the beam, with the beam from bottom, like so. This will work just fine. This is going to be like our grouping. We're going to place grouping here. So, fill interior, and this do a reshape. And the reshape will control when we want to just stop with this uh, control group. Uh, and I'm going to say around here, and it will disappear around kind of here. This will be just fine. It creates this animation, and this will be null out control. So we have everything here. We shift O, shift O, shift O, and shift O. We have everything divided into stages. The fracturing, the velocity, the controlling, the RBD, and the constraints. Okay, so this is going to be the hardest part, but it's going to be our brain in this situation. So let's create our pop attributes. We're going to create the following attribute based on our volume. Do you remember this one? The SDF? Okay, so we are going to determine what is inside and outside our SDF. So let's create a surface. This is the name of the SDF. And we're going to clamp everything else below 0.2 to everything else above 0.2. And we're going to range it from minus 1 to 1. It's okay, and we're going to use a float. If we go to our attributes here, we can go inside our RBD pack, go to our geometry and look for surface. So far, nothing, at least uh, under the frame one. So we don't have anything yet. This is why, because we didn't have, or we didn't plug in the control. Now we have these bodies. So we're going to group what's inside from what's outside. The group is going to be in surface, and we're going to enable this and we're going to just use the following expression so if we say that the surface is less than our chf offset we're going to be determining that everything that is under this value is going to be interpret as if it's inside our geometry so i'm going to write everything at least under one to become our grouping we can see this like so after we create this wrangle wrangle pop wrangle and we're going to say that everything that is in this surface will be output to to one so everything that is that is not in our software will be output to one only once so let's write out and we will see that when time goes by we're going to start having so i made a mistake we should have one r here and now we're going to see that everything that is over the threshold will be output one why is this important because we want to determine first of all our advection our advection by volume Basically, we'll say that, okay, we created a velocity here and we want to back this and we want to move our geometry based on our bending motion that we created before. If we say that everything that is not outside, hence out equals to zero, because this haven't gone out of the geometry yet, we can determine what parts are affected and what parts are not affected. So, remember that we had this reshape animated. After this frame, nothing is going to be inside because there is no inside to be anymore. So let's turn off this pop force and let's go to frame 96. As you can tell, it goes and it follows until it just continues with the velocity. There is no velocity being affected or being advected, but it just continues on going. But we want these pieces to actually uh, fall down due to the gravity. So we're going to turn on this and we will see what happens. It just doesn't work, it doesn't resist. So how do we fix this? Like so, only the pieces that are outside will be affected by the gravity. So no gravity, no gravity, no gravity, and we're starting to have gravity. See how it works a little bit better now? 
Okay, so if we want a little bit more utility here, we could in fact go to our pop at back volumes and increase just a tiny bit the velocity and see what happens. See, it works a little bit better now and it just falls after frame 96 as we determined. And we're going to break our constraints right now. Let's create a soft solver. Let's hop in, let's go to our relationship geometry, which are the constraints, so we we'll see closely here, and let's create a wrangle set to primitives. Let's go to and write the following expression. If our angle, so let's go here and go to primitives, we have angle here somewhere. On, not on the first frame, we need to calculate just a tiny bit more. And now we have angle here. So if our angle is more than point uh, four, we're going to remove prim zero, prim num zero. This will delete every primitive that is above that bending. So let's see what happens. We could in fact just not display this and see if it breaks something. Yes, it's breaking. So far so good. Let's see how it looks like so. And I think it works flawlessly. These are some issues that we're having and it should eventually fall down if our geometry allows so. Maybe we need just a tiny bit more of erosion. We'll go to 0.5. And let's pop in again. So it's working, it's working, it continues and it falls down like so. See, every piece is down at the, at the, at the ground. And this is how we create a bending or a guided simulation. And as a small addition, you will have this file on the description. You can create something like this, more complex, but it's, the, it's pretty much the same uh, uh, asset or the same yeah, it's pretty much the same technique. So I didn't change anything. I just did a box with a boolean and I copied on the top and then I grabbed the twist and I just, well, I just took the height. This is the B box, max height or the Y axis. I maintained animation. This is the same. I just, the only thing I did is increasing uh, the particle scale to 2. I went inside here and instead of uh, uh, updating the velocity, I updated the force so it adds over time. And then I just removed this. Yeah, I removed this so I want the force always to be available. And well, <laughs> nothing else. It's really simple and you can have tons of control. Look at this. This is amazing. And just to show you how fast it is, I'm going to go to here and change maybe the... Let's go to the other side, like so. And let's calculate everything now. So isn't this amazing? Look at this control that we have here. It's nuts. So if you want to learn how to do this, please follow the tutorial and download the heap file. It is really important that you check on the file because it will really be useful for you in future works or projects. Thanks for reaching to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please join our Discord, join our YouTube channel and please leave a comment if you want to suggest any other video. Stay tuned and until next time.